Hello, I'm Paul. I study how technology is impacting businesses. I look at the generations, you know, the older generation, newer generation, how kids are using their mobile phones, how kids are using technology, how kids are using digitals. And by kids, I mean even people like me, because I'm some kind of a kid, I'm a geek, right? So this is what I do, I work with big businesses. So why would I speak to uh, um, IT World uh, next month? It's because I think, I believe, that we've seen a big shift in generations in technology as well. I was involved in 1999 uh, at World Telecom here in Geneva where we were recording this. Um, you remember maybe back then, if you're old enough to do, to do so, that you would have a Nokia phone and that it was the internet on mobile was not very, very well uh, working. There was uh, some protocol called WAP. And nowadays you have a smartphone. And your smartphone is actually more powerful than the computer you used to have in your office two years ago, three years ago. It has changed everything. It has given people a, a tools that are very much empowering. Imagine you have a world with a lot of people who have a, a huge computer in their pockets at all times. And more and more we go forward, they not only have this computer in, in their pocket, but also the computer is always connected, always on, with faster and faster broadband speeds. So imagine how the businesses can be impacted and how the world is impacted, the societies are impacted, our cultures are impacted. And this is a little bit what we're gonna talk about. Of course, if you took the, the um, the angle as uh, a mobile carrier, a mobile operator, as we call them, call them in Europe. Their world has changed as well. It used to be that uh, mo mobile operators were actually, you know, sending you a mobile phone that was delivered by another company, uh, and then they would actually sell you services. And nowadays, if you look at what consumers want, they just don't want a mobile phone anymore. It's not about the mobile phone or smartphone. They want to have to know what they can do with it. This is, what, this is why uh, Apple started uh, back in 2008, actually, when the App Store was launched. Uh, you've seen s more and more apps were created. You see, so external developers, so the loss of controls by, by, by manufacturers to do a lot of software that people can use. And now, when people choose a phone, they actually don't choose a phone. They also choose a phone because it's nice, it's well designed, it's fast, but they choose a phone because they can do stuff with it. And this has changed completely the, uh, the shape of the industry. You see manufacturers that used to be big that have disappeared. And you've seen big telcos that used to be big that are struggling to understand where the market is going. And this is what I'd like to do uh, with the panelists that I will invite at uh, ITU World Telecom. I will have uh, three panelists, there may be more, but I cannot name them yet. Uh, I will have in uh, alphabetical order of their first name, Benedict Evans, for me, is one of the best industry analysts for mobile. He's based in London. He looks at the numbers. He looks, you know, why is Apple so big? Samsung and all these, all these, all these names you keep hearing about: Android versus uh, versus iOS and the new the new generations like Firefox Mobile. He looks at these and he tries to make sense of it. And then I will have. Um, Colin Miles, Colin Miles with, uh, has a very long experience in mobile. He also has experience in music. So all these services you put on top. So what, why would, you, uh, would a, cons a consumer uh, like a mobile phone, what he can do with it? So he has the angle of all these services you put on top, the layer that you put on top on, uh, on a mobile phone. And then uh, the last one will be Robbie Hills. And he represents a company that you might have heard about, Google. Uh, and uh, he, he works in advertising. He will, he will have a very interesting point of view because you know, we, you, you have suddenly a company, it's Google, that does advertising and search and is, that is moving towards mobile and also offering a, a, a mobile operating system. And all these things are making some other competition a bit uneasy. Where, all, where is all, all this going? So with these three, I think we'll have a pretty good view of uh, where the market is going. We'll try to see where it's going in the next five to 10 years. An example, I just talked about, about, about Google. It used to be that, you know, again, uh, a mobile phone was created by a company that would have full control in it. And now you have all these new, uh, um, these new operating systems that are, that, are, that are arising. You have also Ubuntu, so I mentioned Firefox, there's Tizen, there's others. But what, I, what it means is that suddenly, all the, all the, the, it seems like the sand is completely shifting. And these, the businesses, whether you're on the consumer hand or the enterprise end, they don't know where the market is going. And the consumers, in the end, are the ones winning. Because the cons consumers get better technologies, faster technologies, they can do more stuff with it. So uh, it's a very, very big optimistic view that uh, I'm gonna 
talk about uh, this, uh, this topic at, uh, in Bangkok next month with my panelists, and we'll have some surprises for you. So I hope to see you there, and uh, you can contact me uh, and find me online at paulpapadimitriou.com or on Twitter at Papadimitriou, and you'll find all the information, and please engage with me, and I'll be very happy to talk about all these innovative and disruptive technologies that are reshaping generations and uh, societies. Thank you.